Secret Life of Walter Mitty is a 2013 film directed by Ben Stiller, written by Steve Conrad, and based on the short story by James Thurber. The film is about the titular character, Walter, a 40-something-year-old Life magazine negative asset manager. Walter daydreams a lot, spacing out and imagining usually funny and inventive scenarios in which life goes his way while in the real world it does not. The movie opens with Walter looking through his checkbook at all his recent expenses. It is immensely important that the first thing we see Walter do is worry about his finances and his job, which is the thing he will be trying to save throughout the majority of the plot. When he leaves the house, he is hunched over slightly and walking much slower than all those near to him. And when he gets to the train station, he is sitting while everyone else is standing. Through this, the viewer gets the message that Walter is physically and emotionally drained. When he gets to work, he stands out, wearing a tan faded jacket while those around him wear full suits. This is again showing his exhaustion, but is also representing a sort of hierarchy, placing him at a lower status than his colleagues, even more amplified as he goes downstairs below everybody to get to his place of work. This paired with the fact that many of Walter's interactions with his colleagues leave him embarrassed or belittled works well to allow the audience to sympathize with Walter. Walter's exhaustion gets explained later at his mother's house after he has to buy his mother an expensive apartment to compensate for the piano she has representing his father and the burden he left on Walter. He looks exhausted and faded because of this. Walter's father died when he was 17 and after that Walter gave up his childhood and got a job. And at this point of his life it is clear that he has put his financial burden ahead of his love interest. In the very first scene when we are introduced to our protagonist we are also introduced to his love interest Cheryl Melhoff but we are not introduced to her until Walter is done worrying about his finances. This shows that for Walter's whole life, he has had to put the ability to provide for his family ahead of his own desires. He has been so caught up with his own responsibilities that he's never actually put time into a relationship, which explains why he can be so awkward in these situations, because he's never actually been in a situation like this before. A little later, we learn of his backpacking and travel plans that had to be canceled due to the death of Walter's father, whom Walter was very close to. From then on, Walter has had to grow up and provide. We are first introduced to Walter's issue with daydreaming in the film on Walter's phone call with Todd from eHarmony. When Walter is asked about having done anything noteworthy, he imagines himself saving Cheryl's dog in a heroic way so that he can look noteworthy. This continues throughout the movie, Walter imagining he could be a better hero, such as standing up to his boss or impressing Cheryl. At this point in his journey, he relies completely on these fantasies. Walter is a negative asset manager, meaning he archives all the incoming photographs coming into Life magazine. One of his biggest collaborators is Sean O'Connell, a traditionalist war and nature photographer who shoots on film. At the beginning of the story, it is found that the magazine will be converted to life online, meaning that many people who have been deemed non-vital are going to be fired. Also, the last physical copy of the cover is going to be a Sean O'Connell. The set of photographs came along with a note to Walter and a wallet. He calls negative 25 his best, the quintessence of life. When it's found that negative 25 is missing, Walter is called to go on an adventure in search of Sean O'Connell. His fantasies, which he used to picture a more desirable and adventurous version of himself, are used to illustrate the call that he feels to go to find the quintessence of life. And the scene of him leaving is so triumphant because it's the first time in the movie that our hero has really taken action. Since I have already talked about the symbolism of the piano representing the weight put on Walter's shoulders to provide for his family ever since his father died when he was a teenager, I now want to jump around to some other symbols the movie has to offer, most apparent being the quintessence of life. Walter has sent a photo from Sean labeled the quintessence of life. The word quintessence is derived from the Latin word quinta essentia, meaning fifth essence. According to Western philosophy, the circle of life comprises of four essences, air, fire, water, and earth. And throughout the story, Walter comes into contact with all of these essences. Air on the helicopter flight out of Greenland, water when he jumps out of the helicopter into the sea, fire when he is nearly killed by an erupting volcano, and earth throughout the story in many instances. And with those four things being the essences of life, the fifth essence is space and sky as it pertains to spirituality and self-discovery. The idea of self-discovery is very apparent throughout the movie. This is personified in the wallet which is given to Walter by Sean. A wallet is something you put your forms of identification in. It is apparent from the beginning of the movie that Walter is unable to understand his own identity. He is constantly imagining improvements on his character, but is never acting upon them. This makes the times when he does that much more satisfying, because of our endearment to his character, which we have felt from the shy beginnings of his hero's journey. The way the film uses Walter's daydreams in terms of his character is one of the best things the movie 
has going for it. Not only are they funny, but they are also able to communicate to the viewer the stage of Walter's journey which he is currently on. In the beginning, when the daydreams are happening all the time, it is clear that our hero is relying on them. But as the story progresses, the daydreams become less frequent. This is due to the fact that Walter is now fully present and in the moment. He has learned to live in a way which does not require these daydreams. He has learned to live in a way which he does not have to imagine himself as less mundane because at this point, he is. And in the end, when Walter goes to Afghanistan to find Sean, he no longer has these daydreams at all. When he actually does find Sean, he's at the top of a mountain in the Himalayas. Sean tells him that the picture the whole time has been the wallet given to him, but at this point Walter has thrown the wallet away out of frustration before going to find Sean. Then Sean and Walter both see the ghost cat which Sean had come to take pictures of. Sean describes the ghost cat unlikeness of coming out and being seen perfectly in the sentence. Beautiful things do not demand attention. When Walter asks if he's going to take the picture, Sean replies that sometimes he does not. Sometimes, if he likes a moment, he doesn't like having the distraction of the camera. After the ghost cat leaves, Walter asks Sean what the quintessence of life was a picture of. Sean replies to this by calling the picture a ghost cat. This scene is so great because it encapsulates all that the movie is trying to communicate. By seeing Sean just wanting to stay in the moment instead of taking the photo, Walter is finally at the point in his life where he no longer is reliant on his daydreams. He is now able to stay in the moment in his life, and calling the photo sought after the entire film a ghost cat, Sean is saying that the picture or the contents of it are beautiful and do not demand attention. To illustrate the transformation of Walter even further, his movements at the end of the film are polar opposite to those at the beginning. When the film started, Walter looked tired. He was hunched over all the time and walked much slower than those around him. And by the end, it is clear that he has changed because he is now standing up straight and runs past the people in the street in order to go talk to Cheryl, while at the beginning he was scared to send her a message through an online dating site. In the end, when we find that the picture is of Walter, the picture called a ghost cat, we understand that Walter is beautiful and doesn't demand attention. We understand this because of our connection we have felt to him from the beginning of the film, but it has taken the entire movie for Walter to understand and appreciate himself.